Conservatory Group for the second of four uh, monthly, weekly, uh, doing the month of um, March uh, workshops and acrylics. We've done rate brushes last week and did animals and birds. Here you are, some of the examples we did and how it happened. This week we're on to this one of the um, deck chairs. Uh, not a hard one to paint. We're going to be using painting knives on here, flat brushes and uh, filbert brushes if they wish to use the flats, and sponge texturing on the beach. The problem with this one is the drawing. They chose it, I didn't. Um, but the, the deck chairs themselves and these various angles are very complicated, and to finish up with nine stripes across is not going to be an easy challenge for them today, so the drawing might take more time than the painting. Once you've got the drawing done, fine, I'll get a larger one for them. I'll get to show them on a small scale how to measure up on this. So, today then, acrylics, second part of the four, four uh, workshops in uh, 2019, and this coming uh, November when I get back, we've got another one, possibly pastels. If anybody wants to join us, please book in at the steel rooms in Brick on their website or call them. Right, so what we've got is a piece of hardboard or MDF, as usual, and what I've done already, um, good pencil handy, lovely, I've quickly drawn out um, some basic lines for you to start you off. <laughs> what I've done straight away is to take my photograph, and this piece of board isn't the same scale as the photograph. Now in this case, we need this to be accurate. We can paint loosely within a tight drawing, but to paint loosely within a, a loose drawing would look awful. It gets it even worse. So always have a reasonably good drawing to start with if you to paint loosely. Unless you're very, very good and just go for it. So what I've done is put the photograph at the top of the board here in this corner. And we take a diagonal across here, and the is where it finishes. So we then draw a line up. That is either to be cut off later or we just add it on. Yeah? If it doesn't matter whether you move things around and you're good enough. Of course, you could expand things, you could, you could change things, but you don't want to lose the proportions. Yeah. So as Constable did with his paintings, Blackford Mill, you can see he actually moved oak trees 30 yards apart. Uh, they're still there, so you can see what he's done for the composition. <laughs> All that matters to us is this at the end of it. Yes. Not somebody saying that lighthouse is one foot to the left. You decide what you want to hear. So today, for the, for the reason that we want to get scale and proportion right, we're going to keep within this scale. I've marked the picture as usual with quarters, I've marked the board with quarters. Then I've decided, right, where does the horizon come and where does the um, gravel come? And a little trick that you might not have known from woodworking days is you want to make a straight line, you can run your finger against here. Quite a useful thing. You can do that quite, quite large, or even on quite large canvas. So we can do it, this is what I've done with this, to find your um, horizon line and so on. And I'll put it on there as well. Now, like those comic books when we were kids, maybe you still see them, um, but you know, when you have the dots and you join them up in a face of it, we're going to do that here. And the first two marks we make in a drawing denote the entire composition. So when you look through a frame, or you look at a composition, you use your hands, and you decide that plant one is going to come there, and that bit of carpet is going to come there, and you make those two marks, you have made that scissor for the entire painting, unless you move things around. Yeah? You've got to be careful doing that, haven't you? Inanimate objects like plants and trees and things, you can change them. But people look a bit silly with their legs dragged out unless you attend it. So once we've made these marks here, they've got to join up correctly like those faces in the comic. So what I've done here, I said, right, I think Boris, we're going to have to share that one in short, but I'll let him just to get going with the drawing until we're ready to this one. Um, is, right, where does this point come here? So we come across our bar here, and we can subdivide these up. We say, right, that line comes up and it's just inside, say, uh, what is this? That's, that's this line, that's this mark here, there. So we're going to come inside that, it's about a third across, or one, two, three. We come down, there's about a third across there, so we do the same here. Approximate thirds, it's just inside the third, and come down here, and that's the position that way. What's the position this way? So that's the metal, what's the position down, and it's ju oh, just, just in between that line and the, so it's about here, so there's our first X, yeah? And we're going to make the whole thing up like that. Now, you notice that's a slight angle compared to that one. 
We've got nine stripes to fit in there, so we're going to know if you're right in the end. We're going to get those right, that takes a bit of working out. And these should end up the same as well. So there are certain points we can double check. So that's where this point starts. Where does this one come here? And we'll say it's just above this line here, so we'll draw a little construction line coming up like that. We're going to paint all these out anyway, it doesn't matter. Where does it come here? Ooh, just, just about halfway, so we'll say approximately halfway. That's where that comes. So we should be able now to do two things. We can draw a line between there and there, but we can take a ruler or a pencil across to check that we're not far out. Yeah? You can check your angles by doing that. So we know that that's approximately that. We'll just come slightly inside and draw a line like that. So that has to be this is very basic. Right. This one's going to be parallel to it. Where does that come? It comes in halfway between here and here. So we come down with the construction line there. And it comes just inside the halfway here. And we know that it's going to be, I haven't done that one yet, but it's about a quarter up. So one, two, three, quarter. That's going to be our line there. So that one should be parallel. It just about works out, doesn't it? So you're going to do all of these. Lucky one there. <laughs> Me doing it on camera. Oops. No. Um, so you're going to do all of these little X's and join them all up wherever they are, and eventually, like a jigsaw, the whole thing will appear. Yeah? Have fun, because this is very difficult. Painting is going to be easy compared to this. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to paint the magenta mix across here. As level as I can. I go slightly over your line because when you when you come back to the sea, you can straighten that out. If you don't paint slightly over the line, you suddenly find yourself getting a white mark in between. This will be. Oops, a little paint around the place. I'm not even mixing it thoroughly. I'm just going on there and enjoying slapping some paint on again. So a broken colour this time. I want to play my warmth against my cools. At the moment, this is still wet, and that's what I want. I want to blend in. I'm going to start now. Just getting my vertical strokes. Right, I want to come down now and go a little bit, um, bit cooler. Uh, no, I'm not going to go to the I'm going to use my. I'm going to go to cooler there. I want, I want light blue on that, and I want yellow on that. So, I'm going to use some lemon yellow. A little bit of white in this broken colour. Lemon yellow. Again, we've got our cool and warm yellows. Let's see if that works. And I'm going to use vertical strokes like that. But you could use crisscross strokes like this, little strokes. You see how that's starting to vibrate now already. I'm going to use fairly vertical strokes and just blend in different places. Almost like the feeling of, of, of atmosphere going on behind there. Just, just. Tinting this in so it, it's like a broken colour, but it's just blending a bit. I want a, I want a slightly more contemporary feel to my, to my artwork. I don't want to be turning out either an impressionist piece or a photographic piece. So I'm just going to make these lovely vertical strokes here. And that's one colour against another, I'm already giving us a nice bit of light, yeah? Now I'm going to go to my light blue. Now if you cerulean for this, I'm not going to use turquoise, I'm going to use cerulean, but it's slightly warmer than the turquoise. Turquoise you can make with cerulean and a bit of lemon yellow. I'm going to use a bit of the cerulean and white. This is my choice, but there's all sorts of permutations of that sky. You could use, instead of using the lemon yellow, I could use a very, very light orange. That would look nice as well. You know, there's all sorts of ways we can do this. There's a bit of blue sky going there, it's very really light, so I'm just going to bring in these vertical stripes now and leave you, and they're just blowing through. That's a pretty piece of wallpaper. Quite quick. Paint like this and we're out there, it's just looking for those colours and seeing them, and being brave enough to do it, and not trying to paint just what's there straight off, looking at the effects we can get, being brave. And, uh, going forward. Now, that to me is nice and fresh. You can learn by playing with it. That will do, you know. Um, so you can do it with crisscross dots, or you can do it with small dots, you can do it with any like. That's going to play quite nicely against the sea in a moment. So 
So I'm going to let that dry and catch up. Very nicely, that. Okay, then, as I said, for the sea, I want to um, get these bands of colour coming across, but I'm also going to paint both vertically and horizontally. So I've got a slightly deeper magenta happening there, up here. It seems very dark at the moment because I've got my canvas and I'm planning ahead. I know that I'm going to need these very light whites and greens later. So I know that that's going to be all right later. It's only seeming too dark because of the white canvas. But it's gone, it will come out right. So I'm going to take a wee bit of the magenta, a wee bit of cerulean into it to give me a slight movie. The, let's see if that does it. Should we just turn up to There we are, look. Just giving that, you can see it happening, the difference between these two is what we're after. That's cerulean and this, magenta. Yeah, magenta with a little touch the other way around. Magenta with a little touch of cerulean, not cerulean magenta, magenta and cerulean. Which way around? It's like mixing that light colour cream. If you start with the wrong colour, you'll end up with too much. We've got a, a green turquoise going on here next. Really push it. I'm exaggerating the colours that are there. They are here, but I'm exaggerating them. Pull them out. And if the colours are then they went here, for instance, there's a little bit more of that purple going into it. I'm going to blend that back in just a moment. I'm just going to feather that down on my brush vertically. I'm just linking that in, same as the sky, I'm just linking that colour into the monocolor. I'm just feathering it over the edge. So we get a very soft blending of sparkle there. What, what made the green? <coughs> turquoise. Just turquoise. Okay. It is, in this case, I've got a turquoise green, so if, if it's not green enough, then add a little bit of the lemon yellow to it, okay? If you're not happy with it. The magenta, a little touch of ceremony in the white wood. Little brush strokes up here. Texturing isn't really as important until I get lower down. This is a painting knife now, and I've got this rather nice one here, which it was a Bob Ross one. It's one of the nice because of its shape. You can get right-handed and left-handed models of it. This is a right-handed one. And not that it really matters. But the beauty is you've got a long flat edge, small for detail and that. Whereas you can get knives with all sorts of shapes, of course. Um, and I, I need to mix some paint up. If I was doing huge amounts of paint, and I would use this to mix them. If I'm doing small amounts, I might use this to brush. Anyway, whichever is your choice. I want to start looking at now these bits of texture over the water and rather than just dragging it, I'm going to gently let the knife do the work. Keeping his fingers crossed, he says. I'm going to start with a bit of turquoise in the background there. Just mix a bit up with my knife, just a tip of my Not much look, don't need much in there, yeah? Just a bit. And I'm going to just get that onto the end of flat of my knife by dabbing it, dab, 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 like that, dab, 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 to get the texture on my knife. Not smudging it, dabbing it. Now that texture, if I'm gentle, I can bring onto here by just gently touching on there, look. Let me sky in that one. This will be all right. Enjoy this winter, eh? In this. <laughs> The same colours we've already used in the sky and in the sea down below. We can use these mixtures across here to the texture onto here. If you're not sure, come and see what I'm doing. By all means, I'm just in here. I'm just dabbing onto the surface like that. You see the texture the same on here. What I want to do now is come back onto here. If I can texture it onto there, I can use my finger when I want. Or The more paint you have in the palette, the heavier the texture you can do. So you've got big lumps of texture, make a bit more on the palette. Make sure you can go over edges. Don't um, leave a halo around objects. And you can go lighter and lighter. With that light green that I just made, the light time, I just added a bit more white. You'll start to get a sparkle here. 
And as you build these textures up, of course you are making raised areas, aren't you? So if I go back with my cream now, and I find where I've already raised it, I can gently tickle across the top of the existing raised areas. And these little slick tricks we can use to get the effects in here. Look at the weight of my fingers doing it. Now for the beach, we're going to paint the block colour in and then go back with sea sponges. I've got a whole load of sea sponges in the bowl over there. It is up to you to choose the textures that you think you're going to want. And to use two, you might use a fine one and a heavy one. I'm just going to use probably one. Um, the textures I want. Last week, we used the uh, rake brushes. If you have a rake brush, you can even use a bit of a rake brush to make some of these pebbles. But let's go with the sponge. I'm going to start off with a deep, warm brown. In fact, I'm going to start off with, uh, in my palette, it's um, Lizard and Crimson. But uh, whatever you want, if you could use burnt sienna and a touch of the uh, cobalt, that would give you a lovely brown. Do these colours again? <laughs> for this colour now, for you, you would use a uh, burnt sienna and the, uh, and the cobalt blue will give you either a, a more or cooler. You have, to, you have to mix it according to the consistency you want. You can use different consistencies of paint to delineate between the figures. And while I've got the colour on my brush, it's also on the, uh, the figure as well, so I'm going to paint that in. Right, the colour that I'm using there is a very deep purple. So I wanted to delineate some of these darks on the, in the shadows, these darks here. And I'm going to put some really deep blues in here in a minute as well. You choose your sponge bits whenever you want. You want something fairly chunky like this one. Don't, make, don't get too fine a bit of sponge, okay? Don't be afraid to do all the way You can always come back and touch things up later. Texture, right. So right again, and I'm going to start putting on some cooler colours. Again, I can come back over my, I've established where my um, chairs are. I'm going to have to come back over those because there's no way that I'm going to not hit the chairs at times. So that's some of my blue greys going on. And you can always drag it slightly, so when I've got the sponge on, I can drag like this a little bit, look. And I can make some slightly longer pebbles or bits of weed, which are about. We don't want uniformity, which is not natural. We really do look for how many colours are in there. There's going to be greens and all sorts on this beach. That's going to leave with the greens in the sea as well. Right, that's enough of the sponge. What I'm going to do now is come back in with a small brush. I'm going to go to one of my little fill bits now. I could use a round, but I think it would probably be the best job for this. And I can start to take some of these lovely colours and make things a little bit larger in the foreground. We want some larger pebbles. It goes large, smaller, smaller, smaller. So we're having the larger pebbles here in the foreground. If you see me using a colour and you haven't got it there and you want to come and use it, come and have a dab.
something that comes more closely if you want to come walk. Once you've got those bands of base color in, you can start to look at the subtle variances in between very carefully. Get the rip into the white canvas first, this yeah. is the job. So you can see wood for trees, as they say. So, but the colours that I've got on there are on here, and more. And I've got a lot more blue in afterwards to bring that out. I need to go back in and soften this, this wall. You see now, I've taken some of that turquoise and green blue and linked the sea into the pebbles. Right, so before I go on, there you go. You see how those lights work and the whole thing, it pushes the darks back. And now I've got to think, right, I've got those highlights. Do I need to be lighter anywhere else? So now I'll come back into the foreground and start to add. This is why I didn't go too light to start with. I want to finish with the lights. And my darks and my mid-tones, gradually working my way up. Now I can play with light, paint with light, and finishing off. And this is where the fun is, this is where the real pleasure. Painting up until now is you gathered, it's just hard work. You've got to draw it, you've got to build it up. That's lovely. Look at the colours you're finding now, you see. That's that beautiful. Enjoy, enjoy the colours. This lady I taught yesterday, Hannah, when I was doing this, I uh, told you the mixed medium one. She's got so uptight, and we were dropping wet into wet inks and just slodging around, and it was so easy to start with, and then we tightened up gradually. Don't get bogged down with it. We're here to have fun, for heaven's sakes. Bigger strokes in the foreground of your, when you've done your sculpture. Watch out for these reflected colours. I mentioned green on the skin here, for instance. Watch out for all of these. And you see why I want that little yacht in the left now? You might yeah. want to consider it because the yeah, little blue and red just balance it. So if you haven't got that in, you might want to consider that little yeah. yacht. Okay, I consider I'm at the very end of my painting. So if I wanted to use black, which I hardly ever do, if I want to be only darker than that, I just want to show you what happens. Take a little bit of black, and because the black is much warmer, I'm going to put it into the foreground here, and you'll see the effect it has upon the surrounding colours. It will make the darks that I've already got seem much more colourful.